is to a uh, another video I uploaded on YouTube uh, regarding setting azimuth on a cassette deck. Um, I did mention in the comments box that there is a more accurate way of doing it, and I'm going to do this now on a uh, Revox A77 I have here. Um, as you can see, the Revox is uh, set up. Um, I've got a signal from the AF signal generator feeding into the inputs of the uh, machine. I've set it at 0 dB on the meters. Um, and on the scope here, if you see, this is the input of the, uh, sorry, the output of the um, reproduction amplifier. It's on the measure, looking at the inputs at the moment. Um, there's actually two signals superimposed on each other there. If you see, that's one channel and the other channel's behind it. So I've set them to exactly the same level, so that's on the input. Now I'm going to start the recording on the machine. This is a 10 kHz signal. There is a bit of oscillation on the output, which is an effect of the, uh, the, the uh, biasing current as far as I know. I'm not too sure if that's normal. I need to investigate that. It could be something to do with the bias traps. So the machine is running now. Um, and what I need to do is look at the output and get the best reproduction possible. I need the highest output figure and I also need the fig figure to be um, the waveform to be perfectly in phase. So as you can see it's in phase now. I'm going to go to the second head, the, the playback head. Okay, well, I've actually deliberately set this machine up slightly out of azimuth. So. And you can see there that the uh, there's a uh, almost 180 degrees phase shift on the um, on the output. Now, as I know the playback head's set correctly on this machine, um, and I haven't been touched, I'm going to adjust the record head. This is the record head, this is the playback head. The screw here with the red paint on it, that's the azimuth screw. That's the azimuth screw for the playback head, that's the azimuth screw for the record head. Now I'm going to adjust that so this head's alignment matches exactly with the playback head. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust that. If I get the screw over and give that a little tweak. And if you come back to the scope, now if I get it to f see the waveform increasing, you'll always get a little bit of movement if, if the heads are slightly worn, the tapes are slightly worn. You want to get the waveform as high as possible, but you also need to keep them in phase. So you see I'm going a little bit past the peak. Now you see the output's dropping off on one channel. Come back again, turning it anti clockwise. You want to get it as best you can. So it's sort of moving in and out of phase, but that's pretty good actually. You can see, I think that's about as best you're going to get. So that's the adjustment on there. Now I'm going to increase the, decrease the, the frequency down to, this is 10 kilohertz. No, this is, sorry, this is about 16 kilohertz. I'm going to decrease it down to about 10 kilohertz, which is a bit more of a usable range for this uh, a bit more sensible range. Let me just check it again and just see what it's like now. It's it's pretty good actually, it's staying pretty constant. So if you look at the input, that's the input and the output. You see there is a bit of a bit of movement there in the waveform, but that's about as best you're going to get it without replacing probably replacing the tape heads. Um, I hope that was an interesting and useful video. Thanks for watching.